Corn in all of its forms was a unique grain to the North American continent. By the last half of the 18th century, it's becoming a staple grain in the American palate and a unique part of the American identity. Today on the Deerskin Diary, we're going to talk about one of those forms of corn, and that's this, Rockahominy. It's toasted corn flour, and we're going to reproduce an 18th century trail recipe using pocket soup and Rockahominy. So stick with me on the Deerskin Diary. The writings of the Virginia aristocrat William Byrd are a treasure trove of information on native foods like Rockahominy because they were written for a British audience who had never experienced them before. Rockahominy is nothing but Indian corn parched without burning and reduced to powder. The fire dries out all the watery parts of the corn, leaving the strength of it behind and being very dry, becomes much lighter for carriage and less liable to be spoiled by moist air. William Byrd. Now, rockahominy is a very unique corn uh, product, right? It's not hominy. It has nothing to do with the hominy process, which we know of today as a process where you take whole kernels of corn, soak them in a lye solution, and either allow them, they, they swell up, um, and then you allow them to dry or put them in a can or a jar. That's standard hominy. Rockahominy is not that. It has nothing to do with that lye soaking process. Rockahominy is simply... Uh, toasted or parched corn ground into a flour-like consistency and that flour-like consistency is very important to note because many of the times that you read about Rockahominy's use along the American frontier the recipes almost have to be that flour consistency. For example, uh, a gentleman named Heckwelder, who was a Moravian minister that traveled among the Delaware Indians, talked about the Delawares taking that rockahominy, adding some maple sugar to it, and when they needed uh, a pick-me-up, they would simply put a tablespoon or so of that in their mouth, and then they would stop by a river or a uh, brook, and they would drink water, kind of swish it around in their mouths, and that would be their sustenance. So again, it has to be that flour consistency. You don't necessarily want it to be that cornmeal. That doesn't sound very appealing. It doesn't certainly sound like something you want to put in your mouth and swish around with water. Pocket soup's a really unique and interesting 18th century dish. I'm gonna put a link uh, down in the description to the video that John Townsend did on the way that he made pocket uh, soup. William Byrd, who we're going to sort of look at more for the purposes of this video, um, he was a colonial Virginian who traveled the border between Virginia and North Carolina, and he seemed to be pretty infatuated with food because he wrote a lot about it, a lot about different foodstuffs. And one of the things that he wrote about was what he called glue broth, which is the same thing as pocket soup, and it is uh, basically made by uh, taking you know sort of gelatinous tougher cuts of meat, slow cooking them until they fall apart, straining out everything, straining the fat out, and then reducing that, that heavy broth down into gelatin. And then that gelatin is dried without heat over a period of time, and it becomes this, becomes this leathery, tough, um, almost like a bouillon, but, but certainly not dry or powdery. And you can carry this in your pocket. Uh, for example, I think that's more of a slang term, but you can carry a, a, a good chunk of this with you, and it doesn't take very much uh, to make a, a strong broth. Um, this is going to be very nutritious, very flavorful, very good for you. Um, as a matter of fact, Bird writes that the glue is so strong that two or three drams dissolved in boiling water with a little salt will make half a pint of good broth. And if you should be faint with fasting or fatigue, let a small piece of this glue dissolve in your mouth and you'll find yourself surprisingly refreshed. Now for these purposes of this video, what we're going to do with this is we've added it to some boiling water down by the fire. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let that cook for a few minutes. And then we're going to add rockahominy. Now, Bird called pocket soup the essence of meat, and I really think he's on to something with that description because it's probably the best overall description of, of the product that you wind up with. Now, we called rockahominy the essence of bread, and I really think that's an equally important descriptor because it's effectively the same product as the glue soup. It is uh, a, a grain with all of the water 
removed from it and then ground into a flour and it's the essence of the grain that's left along with that toasted or cooked flavor much like the glue soup having that long slow cook uh, to, to produce a much deeper flavor so it's little wonder to me that that someone would take these two things someone like bird who's extremely fascinated by food uh, along the frontier and he takes both of these items and he puts them together and he turns them into what's really a delicious dish. So how nutritious is this stuff for you really? That's a great question. Um, you're looking at about 180 calories per cup of the soup mixed with the rockahominy. So that soup is going to be roughly 30 to 35 calories per cup and that is simply because you've taken most of the fat out of it. But the rockahominy itself is about 135 calories per quarter cup. So when you add roughly a quarter cup to a cup of soup, you're going to wind up with somewhere around 180 calories. Very similar to a handful of trail mix or certain protein bars that you might also eat out on the trail. Now the interesting thing about this combination to me, and it is talked about in the 18th century as well, is that it gives you this feeling of being full. It's not like it makes you bloated. It's not like a, it, it makes you feel uncomfortable. It just gives you this kind of stick to your ribs uh, feeling of fullness for a broth type of, of meal or pick-me-up. So I can really see what uh, Bird was getting at in the 18th century with his notion that just a little bit of this could go a long way and could keep you sustained for months on end. So I carry my rockahominy in one of these little small brain tan deerskin pouches that I've made because that's ultimately what is talked about a lot in the 18th century native uh, peoples carrying their rockahominy in small deerskin pouches as well as whites. It, uh, it, it keeps very well like this for, for quite some time. This is enough to last me several days out on the trail for sure. You can actually buy this stuff still on Amazon. But if you search by Rockahominy on Amazon, you won't find it. You have to look for its Spanish equivalent, which is called panole. I want to tell you that panole can come in several different forms in modern times. You want just simply the toasted or parched corn flour. And if you look at the description of the product, you'll oftentimes see the, uh, the, the ingredients. And several of the ingredients uh, might be, you know, sugar, or cinnamon or chocolate. That is used as a drink still in many uh, Hispanic cultures, but they still make panole or rockahominy as a toasted corn flour. And again, you can get it at, uh, on Amazon, you can get it at ethnic grocery stores. I think I've seen it on walmart.com as well. And it is an 18th century food that's relatively untouched after all these years. Now this dish that we're making today, this pocket soup and rockahominy mixture remain popular even through the 19th century and we know this because Bird's words were reprinted verbatim in the scientific journal in 1849. Well here it is folks sort of a little bit of more gelatinous soup with that rockahominy added in um, it's taken a little bit of a different color. It's certainly much lighter in texture. The rockahominy has absorbed a lot of that broth now, and it's a good bit thicker as well. A little bit of a texture of, um, I don't know, a finer, runnier grit maybe, um, but certainly something that'll stick to your ribs. Now, the thing I like about it right off the bat is it's really taken a lot of the really strong gaminess out of that pocket soup. That pocket soup is extremely concentrated and it's very easy to use too much of it. Um, and, and it's got a very strong, like really strong beef flavor to it, which is good. But this rockahominy and the toasted component of that has really already knocked uh, a good bit of that off. So eating it with my old horn spoon here. By the way, this is my lunch today. I'm out in the woods actually trying this stuff out. Um, trying to live like this as much as I can and put it on camera so that you all can can follow along with me. So this is my, my lunch today. I really don't have anything else. I have some water and that's about it. Um, and already it's very, very filling. Already it's very, uh, it's very good. I don't think this needs any salt at all. Um, that toasted flavor really comes through and, and, and Bird nailed it right on the head with that glue soup or pocket soup being the essence of meat 
and this rockahominy with this toasted corn flavor being the essence of bread. Mix those two together and this is something that I will likely enjoy at home not necessarily having to be on the trail. So folks go out and get the stuff. Make the glue soup. Again I'll put the link for uh, John Townsend's video uh, in the description. There are other places on the internet that you can find ways to make it. I mean go out and buy some bone broth and, 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 and try it that way. Get that panole, um, just the toasted corn flour, off the internet or at your local um, ethnic market. Put the two together and try it out. It is a way for you to experience an exact moment in history in the 18th century, and I think you'll never forget it. Thanks for staying with me today, folks, and we'll see you next time on the Deerskin Diary.